Lecture 20 Organizations Should Learn to Fail Intelligently, Part 1. This is the 20th lecture on leadership. In this lecture, we will continue to discuss the failure study of leadership. While the popular trend is success study, we emphasize the importance of failure study and how to learn from failure. Let me start with a story. A famous Japanese entrepreneur, Kazuo Inamori, was once asked by an American journalist why his company was so successful. Inamori only gave one answer, perhaps it was because they never punished employees for their failures. It's worth noting that Inamori had a wealth of experience to share, but he chose to emphasize this one point, not punishing employees for their failures. In the previous lecture, I also mentioned a quote from Ren Zhengfei, the founder of Huawei. Ren said, those cadres who neither make mistakes nor improve can be dismissed on the spot. You can see that great entrepreneurs like Ren and Inamori have a different attitude towards failure and mistakes than ordinary people. They have used this attitude to create great companies. In the previous lecture, I said that one's attitude towards failure is the dividing line between mediocre and great individuals. In this lecture, I will say that one's attitude towards failure is also the dividing line between mediocre and great organizations. Great organizations have four attitudes towards failure. These four attitudes are what an organization should have when dealing with failure. I will discuss them one by one. 1. Early Detection of Failure The first attitude an organization should have towards failure is to detect it early. Major failures in an organization rarely occur suddenly, they often develop from small failures that were ignored and left unaddressed. For example, in 2011, Alibaba suffered a credibility crisis when nearly 100 employees and thousands of scammers conspired to defraud buyers on the e-commerce platform. This involved a large number of employees and was a significant crisis. Eventually, the CEO and COO resigned. It's worth noting that this crisis did not happen overnight. It started with one or two employees and small failures. However, these small failures were not addressed in a timely manner, and they eventually led to a major crisis. Therefore, the key is not how to deal with a crisis, but how to detect small failures and prevent a crisis from happening. How can we detect failure early? One main method is for organizational leaders to engage in management by walking around. What does this mean? It means that leaders should not just sit in their offices and listen to reports, but should personally go to the front line to understand the situation. In previous lectures, I emphasized the importance of connecting with the masses and building relationships with them. I didn't have time to mention that management by walking around is also an important method of connecting with the masses. Management by walking around not only builds relationships but also collects information. Leaders are more experienced observers, and by communicating more with frontline employees, they can collect more raw and unfiltered information. By detecting small failures from subtle clues, they can prevent major failures from happening. 2. Encouraging reporting of failure. However, the places that leaders can visit are still limited, and the failures they can personally detect are also limited. So, what do you think is more important than leaders discovering failures themselves? I'll tell you, it's encouraging employees to report failures. Encouraging the reporting of failure is the second attitude an organization should have towards failure. I once gave a lecture to senior officials, including branch managers, from a state-owned bank. I asked them if they would proactively report a failed project to their superiors during a meeting. They said they wouldn't because the consequences would be severe. Obviously, in this bank, subordinates do not proactively report failures to their superiors. How can an organization encourage employees to report failures? I mentioned Kazuo Inamori earlier, who said that they never punish employees for their failures. Imagine working in Inamori's company, would employees be willing to proactively report failures? They probably would. 
Now imagine working in a company where employees are punished for their failures, would they be willing to proactively report failures? A scholar at Harvard Business School, Amy Edmondson, specializes in studying failure. She conducted a famous study on several teams working in hospitals and found that the best-performing teams had the highest error rates. The best-performing teams had excellent nursing quality, work efficiency, interpersonal relationships, and other indicators, but only one indicator, the error rate, was not good. How bad was it? The best team had an error rate 10 times higher than the worst team. Edmondson was surprised and puzzled by this. She further researched and finally found the answer. Can you guess what it is? Edmondson found that the error rate was actually calculated based on the records of each team. The actual error rate of the best team was not higher than that of the worst team. However, why were more errors recorded? Because if employees in the worst team made a mistake, their superiors would punish them severely, so they would not dare to record the error. In contrast, employees in the best team were not afraid of punishment from their superiors. Their superiors were more tolerant of mistakes. Therefore, if an employee made a mistake, they would record it and hope that others would know about it, so that others would not make the same mistake. I want to remind you that this study was conducted on hospital teams. Think about it, human lives are at stake. If the worst teams hide their mistakes and are not punished, wouldn't it lead to more serious consequences? You may now have a better understanding of the importance of encouraging the reporting of failure. If you cannot encourage the reporting of failure, many failures will be hidden, and even if they did not cause serious damage at the time, they will accumulate over time and eventually become major failures, becoming systemic failures. I am now discussing the second attitude an organization should have towards failure, encouraging the reporting of failure. Encouraging the reporting of failure is so important that besides not punishing failure, can you think of any better ideas to encourage employees to report failure? I'll tell you, some organizations go even further and reward failure. For example, NASA has a Forward One Step, Smart Failure Award. Gray Advertising, a global advertising company, has a Heroic Failure Award. Tata Group, a well-known Indian company, has a Dare to Try Award. 